Oh no, my it's editor, good. my editor for my fanfics had bad bean dip. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> he, he says, I had no idea that boofing was popular among skiers. Oh my. I was just trying to tell him that it's a ski terminology, gosh. Anyway, we got this. Let's actually do some decent arts, because I got to draw one of the original encounters for Scully from Inverted Fate, so that's going to be the first thing I doodle, the line art drawing, once I figure out a pose for the little yep. garden. I, I, like I like how Twitch let me know that you were streaming when I'm already watching your stream. <laughs> Thank you. Twitch is just trying to be thoughtful. Okay, and I should actually pull up a reference image for this character. Oh, hey, someone's in chat. Hey, oh, no. it's Poots! Poots the Bluke, the person who made that- Oh, wow, a lot of people are showing up. Hello, everyone! That's typically what happens when you post links. Yes, it is, and for that I'm grateful. So now I must pull up a quick little reference image of Miserm, the little dragon enemy from... The, one of the Hotland parts, because that's the character Scully wanted me to draw, and then the Star Chas Starchasm wanted me to draw Papyrus and Mad Demi interacting. Okay, cool. Got Miser Mystery. Time to draw a dragon, because I love drawing dragons. Why not? Exactly. Okay, let's do some wingers. And we are listening to Final Fantasy VII music because why not? Yep, yep. Okay, that's one wing. The other one like this. Man, when was the last time I even drew a dragon? This is nice. I guess my A versal lockdown sprites kinda count as drawing a dragon. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then well, my my Zoom actually has arms, so. I don't know if I'll keep the arms in this pose right now, I'm just... I always like to sort of just cash out the pose before I commit to anything. My room has six little spiny horns, I believe, and a little shoot. Honestly, if I ever went back and did, like, regular random encounters for Snowden and stuff, I'd probably add a couple more original enemies just because all the regular Snowden enemies appear in the comic either as mini-bosses or as NPCs, like the teen trio that appeared in the trial. Yeah. But I mean, I could add some other cute- actually, yeah, actually, Gift Trot had some overworld appearances. Like, chillin' at the MTT Resort in Shades. Uh, yes. As you do. I think Gift Trot appreciated the fact that Papyrus totally schooled those pesky teens. Of course! Alright. I'm just reminded that I need to, at some point this week, work on those story shift sprites I said I'd work on, and I mean, I have time with how little hours I'm getting at work right now. They mm -hmm. are really, really shirking my hours, and that's why I might open emergency commissions, because four hours a week sucks. Can I check the chat Jerks. now? Hello! Hello, everyone! And yeah, you're in the- hey, you're purple in my Twitch chat. That's like the most appropriate color. Well, yeah. Yes, it's the new... Alright. Not an Octo-Rock, you're just an O-Rock. Hey, why not? The letter O rocks, and I'm a terrible person for saying that. Okay, so let's... Rotate... Oh, a rock. Let's rotate the canvas, because that helps. Yeah, I'm gonna have to read do the horns a little bit, but yeah, let's give the miser a little sly expression, like so. Spooky little creature. They like their monies, though. Who doesn't? Monies. Papy Papyrus totally tricked them by giving them one of his magic bones and saying it was totally a treasure, and they got so mad later when they couldn't use it to buy a hotel room. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
the right one has one eye that's so you think it's flip. Is it that eye? No, it's and it would be the other. I should wait till I unflip it before I worry about those details. That's the tricky part when you're flipping art is that if there's asymmetrical details in a character design, it's easy to get them backwards. So I have to be very careful anytime I draw Undyne. Of course. Short little neck, but a neck all the same. Man, it's gonna be interesting to see what they do with the remake of this game, because I just hope they keep the kind of light-hearted and silly aspects of FF7, because that game is not as dark and gritty as people say it is. You get it has dark and, and gritty moments, but that isn't the whole game. It has dark and gritty moments, and then you get Red 13 on his hindquarters dressed in a Shinra uniform. Ah, uh, yes. Going by the Ninja Turtles trench coat disguise method, I see. And Barrett in a sailor suit. And then, of course, there's Miss Cloud. Oh, that's and like... All the fun associated with that. Oh gosh, but that's like the best part. Actually, my uh, fanfic editor started playing FF7 recently, and he gave me his live impressions, and that was pretty entertaining. Okay, now Good. I need to give the, the body a bit more of a... It's a little bit too straight, and I want to give it a bit more curve to it, so maybe I'll readjust. Yeah, let's give it a bit more of a slant, like so... <laughs> oh gosh, 212 oxygens. That is a lot of oxygen. Also, fun fact, if you're around bees, it's actually good not to breathe too close to them because the CO2 makes them really uncomfortable and tends to make them a bit more aggressive. So basically, bring a gas mask. Or just kind of breathe away from the bee. There was a honeybee or something on the handle to the door when I came home from work today, so I had to wait until the bee flew away because I didn't want to accidentally irritate it while I was trying to get into the house. Be polite to bees. Oh yeah, especially because they're endangered right now. Uh... Okay, a little more interesting, perhaps. Running in the air, even though it has wings have that tail wrapped around the money bag. Hello, banana bandana. Welcome to the stream. Yes, welcome to the party. We are nerds. If that wasn't obvious. Oh, yes. Gosh, I'm trying to think, like, what games would be worthwhile to stream on here, because I have a lot of Steam games I could do. I sadly can't stream Nino Kuni because I don't have a capture device. Well, let me go through the backlog. I could post a screenshot of my backlog in Discord or something. It is a massive, massive backlog. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's the tail. Well, just focusing on the one that we were talking about beforehand, there is Shovel Knight. Yeah, there's Shovel Knight. I know uh, Chaos, really wants... Chaos really wants me to play Celeste too, but... I feel like probably Shovel Knight first, just because I've had it longer. And then there's Hatoful Boyfriend, which I've seen bits- I was involved in a little playthrough get-together with the college anime club, and we did really stupid voices for all the birds, and we went through Nageki's route, and I believe the Doctor Bird's route, whose name escapes me. The fluffy devil. Yes. The very dark- had to have a boyfriend route. Shu, Shu, his name is Shu. Oh yes, Shu. Ah. Ogostan approves of this choice. Ah. Aww. Hmm. Oh cool. Yeah, glad to have some new and familiar faces in the stream. I'm hoping, since I have so few work days because they hate me right now, 
I'll just try and maybe do some more streams. I do have a Twitch affiliate account, so that's a nice little thing. The trial made Twitch be like, oh hey, you're getting a lot of views, would you like to make money? And you're like, of course. Yes. Wait. Indeed. Okay. Is that an appropriate one? I think, yeah, my has got itty bitty stub arms. Itty bitty stubby arms. He is a T-Rex. Yeah, Ooh, they're, yes. they're like a T-Rex or a raptor with their itty bitty dino arms. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna flip this again. It's gonna be tricky figuring out, like, if I do prices for art and stuff, because I don't want to overcharge, but also I don't want to undersell. That's actually a problem with a lot of online artists. They aren't charging as much as their time is really worth. Oh, for sure. Well, I think an, an easy way to judge that is just ask for their firstborn child. Then see how that works out. I'm not Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> also, <laughs> I already have a fuzzy child in the form of my cat, who is fast yeah. asleep right now. She is a good baby, though. Good. I have two dogs. They are loud. You'll probably hear them occasionally. Yes, I heard a boof earlier. A doggy doggy boof. Okay. They bark if anything moves outside. That seems really normal for dogs, honestly. Hmm, I could do something. It does, but then it's like, oh, our roommate came home and his car has been here for a while, but they don't recognize the sound of the car. Yeah, Cookie, she's less meow 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 at strangers and more, runs up to the door to investigate and gets very excited when people come over. She's a very friendly cat. Hello, Wonky Hop. Hello, hello, Wonky. Welcome to the chat. Yeah, it'd be nice if I could get more work done on that animatic because I just feel bad about kind of procrastinating on it. And I gotta work on the Papyrus video, too, and get that finished up, so I might make that a stream sometime this week as well. Because that Pat video is long <laughs> overdue. And then I kinda want to do some more character analysis videos, like one on Terra from Kingdom Hearts. Um, I'm trying to think of other- actually, Sad AM Sonic would be a worthwhile one to talk about, because I have a lot of salt about how the Sonic fandom views that particular version of the character. I must channel my salt into creative. I mean, let's be fair, Sonic and Salt kinda go together. Oh yeah! In a lot of ways. I feel like Salt is just an innate part of the fandom experience. Actually, maybe I'll have them kind of rubbing their hands together. That might be a more interesting than- oh, Salt's I'm... your hedgehogs. But not too much salt. Chili dogs already have so much flavor. Okay, yeah. Then this- This might work. Yes. Noise. 
Indeed. How long have you been drawing, dork? Oh gosh, since I was like three or four, maybe even younger. Oh, thank you for- Ah, so life. Thank you for reading the chat. Oh hey, it's Meccano! Welcome! No problem. Hey, Meccano. But yeah, I started drawing, gosh, I know that when I was really little, I tried to draw Disney characters. I can't remember how well I actually succeeded at that. And then uh, Sonic was always a big thing for me to try and draw. And I did a little bit of Mario characters as well. I didn't really get good at drawing humans until much later, though, because I spent so much time drawing, like, Sonic characters and Neopets and stuff and not much else. Humans have weird proportions for small children. Yeah, the cartoons well, are a lot easier because they're a lot more compact. Well, also, I just found uh, humans weren't as fun to draw back then. And, like, I still kind of prefer drawing creatures just because you can do a lot more wild and outlandish things. But at least I can draw humans now. Like, you have the option. I have the option. When I'm not drawing Undertale stuff, I find I do draw a lot of, like, dragons and cats, though. Which means They're I- They're basically the same thing. I mean, at some point, I absolutely need to draw Toothless, because he basically is a dragon cat. I'm honestly surprised to hear that you haven't drawn him. I know! I need to fix that, because Toothless is adorable, and I adore Toothless. I just, for some reason, never got to it. Also, Hot Topic's doing a Kingdom Hearts t-shirt design contest, and I kinda want to enter that because you can- The grand prize is $2,000. <laughs> I, have... I don't know which human character you- Oh, you're talking about Eggman, probably. Oh, Eggman was, was thinking... the- very... yeah, Eggman. I was thinking of a very different direction, I was like, oh, that better be sarcasm. Eggman would be pretty fun to draw, actually. He's got a very simple design, especially his classic look. Ah, here's another question. What's difficult to draw? Hands, legs, or something specific? Hands are an artist's worst enemy. I find that sometimes just getting legs to look right is also pretty hard, though. But definitely hands is, like, the most frustrating thing. And then feet, it kind of varies. Also clothes. Like, designing clothes and drawing clothes that are more than just, like, super simplistic designs is another tricky area. Also, thank mm -hmm. you for keeping an eye on the chat while I doodle. Nah, nah, it's all cool. Alright, there's another f God, Chris. Chris. Chris Thorndike was a mistake. It's the same reason we hate the Smurf movies. We don't want to focus on these boring humans. We want to focus on the characters we came to watch. Yeah, well, like... If you have a new audience XP character and you actually make them interesting, it can sometimes work. Like, thinking here... I don't know if... Well, I don't want to say too much about Detective Pikachu because not everyone's gotten a chance to see it, so I won't really go into that, but I enjoyed the human characters there. I have heard that the humans are the weakest element, but they're not bad. Yeah, well, like, the main character, um, the main character was handled well. The other humans could have been more fleshed out. Okay, getting somewhere with this miser. Okay, let's flip this canvas again and see what needs fixing. Actually, all things considered, this isn't requiring too many alterations on the flip. That is good. Means my right. skills are improving. Ah oh, yes, this is actually, I believe it's when um, the reactor is about to explode. This music plays. Oh god. I'm sorry, Meccano. Meccano? Uh, no. 
Birds are hard. Oh, that is sad. Oh, that's a pain. Yeah, the thing is, like, as far as Sonic cartoons go, I feel like a lot of them have things they do well at and other things that kind of hold them back. Like, Sonic X gets some points for its faithfulness to the games in certain areas, but then it's kind of also held back by the fact that A, Chris is a thing, B, the four kids dub was really, really bad at censoring things that were not censored in the games, and they cut Live and Learn, so that's a thing. I doubt 4Kids would have had to pay extra to use an official Sonic song, but they cut it anyway. Finish down. Well, they suffered for their mistakes, and then they were hanging on the edge of tomorrow. <laughs> Honestly, I'd love a full series like the Mania Adventures, though, because I think that would be a ton of fun. Okay. Now... Uh, I think I might move them slightly. Yeah. Lower the opacity. Ah, uh, the Sonic comics. The Sonic comics really are a mixed bag, because, like, Mecha Madness, I believe, was one of the better Penders era stories, but it also wasn't written by Penders. Just as a whole, very mixed feelings on them. I yeah. don't know specifically about the Sonic X comics, though. I um, looked into Sonic them. X comics were written when Ian Flynn took over, and so they had a much higher quality, and they really humanized Eggman in a really interesting way. He was still, like, the mad doctor type, but he had a secret alter ego as a luchador, and it was great. Third question from Poots the Blue. Can you do any impressions? Or do you know someone who can do impressions? Oh gosh. <laughs> Waves. Oh gosh. I. Okay. <laughs> now I'm a little on the Dude, spot. the old Mega Man cartoons were the best. Alright, let me. You're check. so dumb. It's great. Yeah, I need to check them out at some point. I've seen a little bit with Ultra, Chaos, and Claire in a, a rabbit stream, but I haven't, like, watched more than, like, one episode. Let me just check something real quick. Yeah. Okay. Gosh. I think the episode with Snake Man was probably my favorite so I, far. Didn't you, like, show a funny clip where Pharaoh Man just punches Mega Man? Oh, yeah. That's, that's literally all he does. He goes up, Mega Man tries to steal his power, and then he just... That is so inspiring and beautiful. I love it. Pharaoh Man is the best robot master. Fight me. Okay, I think this is actually good enough that I can start doing the final line work, so that's nice. Then I can move on to the other patron request artwork, which is uh, Papyrus and Mad Dummy interacting. So that, yep. that should be fun. Let's just rotate this canvas. Anyway, I'm trying to think of impressions. Like, this isn't a very specific impression, but I can make my voice go really high-pitched. And our can uh. also make it super demonic. <laughs> this is the Furby experience. Dance! For those... Boogie! Do, do, do! <laughs> that sounded more like a drunken Tentamon. I am so sorry. It did. That reminds me, actually, one of my friends when I was younger, when we played through Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, we would, like, kind of riff on it as we played, and she would always make the x knots talk like Furbies. Oh, God. They just reminded her of Furbies for some reason. God. I can kind of see it now. Cursed. <laughs> Super cursed. Gosh, I remember when they made the new Furby designs, and those got memed for a while. Oh, hi, Cookie! Wait, That's my kitty. New Furbies? Much. Yeah, they uh, uh, re ramped Furbies a little while ago, and they had, like, different light-up eyes or something. 
Uh, we have another question. What's the origin of your username? Is there a specific backstory? Um... Oh dear god, those new Furbies are fucking terrifying. They're even worse. <laughs> You're welcome. Anyway, uh, my usernames have a couple different origins. Like, uh, in some circles I go by Mega, and that's because, like, when I was way younger, I went by Megasonic on Sonic forums, and then eventually just shortened it to Mega. But because that's such a common word online, I needed a handle for other sites where that was probably taken, so Dork became a thing because in a roleplay where I played Zexion from Kingdom Hearts, Haruko from FLCL started calling him Dorky Snorky, and then I thought that was funny, so I changed my live journal account name to Dorked. Okay. Origin story we all deserved. Yeah, it was a very odd set of origins for sure. Ah! Hey, why did you switch to lights? No, I didn't want to swap foreground and background colors. You stop that. Okay. No, draw on white on a white background. Hard mode to activate. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, thankfully this is technically a transparent background. Uh oh. All right. Yeah. There is a actually there is a white layer at the bottom, so scratch that. I'm a dumb butt. Okay. But yeah. Well, sometimes, as far as impressions go, sometimes when my friends and I would watch the Funimation dub of DBZ, we'd kind of poke fun at what's going on. And I did a really terrible impersonation of Freeze's original, well, Funimation dub voice. <laughs> uh, I think I vaguely remember that. <laughs> That's basically a loose approximation of what Frieza sounded like before they made DBZ Kai. I'm not Too bad it's Sunday. Oh gosh, yes. Too bad it's Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> when they flipping blow up the city. The Ocean Dub and its stupid censorship is really hilarious. Phalus did a video on it that was just truly beautiful. Mm -hmm. Alright. Checking chat, just in case. Oh yeah, old 90s dubs are inspiring. Okay, just checking something super quick because I just got messaged about something. I will try not to take too long, just doing a quick little scroll through. But of course, when it comes to impressions, there's one that, that can't be forgotten. Oh gosh. Yeah, it is I, the Great Papyrus! Oh gosh. I mean, that's not too bad considering <laughs> that you do not have the manly male pipes of, say, Sunday, but that was definitely papyrusy. I just feel yeah. so awkward trying to do impressions of male characters because I am not the man, even though a lot of people get very surprised when they find out I'm a girl. <laughs> well, if you never try, you'll never get any better, so it's good to practice. Life lessons with papyrus! Yeah. Oh, that's so very true. <laughs> if I'm if I stop being an awkward doofus, I could attempt to do my Alfie's voice that I basically used when I played Undertale for my mom. <laughs> Cause I did voices for all the characters when I did that. Uh, uh, oh, um, well, I I think you shy that you I could just go back to the trash can if it really yeah, I'm just gonna go. Aww. Cute. Alright. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Big shout out for Scully, who this is the patron request for. Uh, he's my only uh, $15 patron right now, and that's like a crazy monthly donation, so like, major kudos. I wasn't expecting a lot of higher tier patrons, so very cool. Thank you for the support. Oh yeah, absolutely. I need to definitely get more content for my $1 patrons. I've got a couple things for them, like the uh, work in progress cut of the Papyrus video is viewable by all my patrons. 
And then $5 patrons get access to concept art that isn't too spoilery. $10 patrons get spoiler concept art and music. Once I get to more video content, I'm probably going to have to figure out how that factors into the tiers, though. Okay, something about that. You could do, like, a sub-night where subs of a certain tier can play certain games on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that would be fun. I just have to figure out... One thing I need to figure out if there's a way to do, like, private streams, because if I were to say... Want to do a stream specifically for patrons, I need to work that out, because I know Twitch streams are public... Mm. That might be best just in Discord, but oh, I don't... Oh, yeah, I'd probably have to make, like, a Discord group DM for people to do that, but that's actually a fair point. I really need to finish the script for part 49, because Spark said that since... Oh, well, I can't say much about part 49, because that's spoilers, but Sparks was going to help me on that one a bit, because he he has some of the assets that are needed for it. Hooray. And then... Hey, Dork, have your Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, though, I do like Dr. Pepper, as far as Pepsi products go. And Pepsi's okay. I don't know, it just tastes kind of sweeter. But I don't drink a lot of pop, anyway. Uh, there's only ten person per... Um. Yeah, I'd have to... If I did go for, a uh, group DM stuff, and I got enough patrons, I'd probably have to, like... Oh, shoot, yeah. There's probably some... I wonder... I think Picarto can do private streams. Alright. I'll have to look into that. YouTube can probably do unlisted streams. Actually, yeah, because I'm part of the Channel Frederator Network, and they've done streams with, like, industry professionals and stuff that are unlisted so that only channel members get informed about them, and so that was cool. Got to see some streams from people who've worked for Disney and stuff. Ooh, fancy. So the one thing about being a Twitch aff affiliate is that they get ex exclusive rights to your uh, streamed content for 24 hours before you can post it on YouTube, but that's not too bad. I mean, that makes sense. They want that initial revenue. It'd be kind of weird if they just let the competitor get it immediately. Yeah, and I can respect that because that gives me time to just kind of do any additional editing specifically for YouTube, but I'll probably put these art streams on there now that I've figured out how to do noise cancellation on OBS. I really wish I had known, I wish I'd known how to do that when I did the uh, Underswap April Fool's game, because that would have been a huge help. Well, now you know. And yeah. knowing it's tough the battle. Well, that'll be great for when the actual Team Switch demo comes out, too, because I want to do a upload of that. They are doing a fantastic job, and I am super excited to see the full demo. I'm not going to give any spoilers from what they're working on, because Team Switched is cool, and I really respect the work that they put into everything they do. Spoilers. There's a character in it. Spoilers. Not a specific character, just a character. Spoilers. It's an Undertale AU. Well, my immersion's ruined. <laughs> it's just funny that so many people try to pit Team Switched and Inverted Fate against each other when, like, we're both on really good terms and we both respect each other's work. It's like, come on, guys, our projects have very different goals and I think they can coexist perfectly peacefully. Like, Team Switched uh, Underswap is going in a much different direction in story and presentation, not just from Inverted Fate, but from the original Underswap as well, and I think it greatly benefits from that. So, when you say original Underswap, do you mean what the fans made up, or what with Pop Prince Pop Popcorn Prince came up with? Both things, although definitely oh. the original 
popcorn print stuff is better than what the fandoms come up with for the most part. Like, there's some fandom under swap things that aren't just the popular fanon that are pretty good. Uh, the Grinning Kitten's done some comics based on their version of under swap that are really interesting and aren't just full on personality swaps, so that's fun. But well, thank you, Wonky Wonk. Yeah! That's very kind of you. Kindness is a virtue. Yeah, once I'm, I'm watching the art stream, and then I'm just looking at the two most recent things I've uploaded. Oh yeah, I need to check and see if more people have misconceptions to contribute. Oh boy. I did leave comments for some of the ones I've seen, at least, because... Is it okay to talk about that? I don't want to say too much if it's meant to be secret. I've already talked about it on the blog, but basically, I'm making a little post about common misconceptions with story shifts, since it seems like a majority of people that know about it know about it through fan art, and obviously, if you've only seen it through fan art, it's gonna be a game of telephone where things get lost along the way, or misunderstood. Yeah. And I think a big part of that is just because of AUs like Underfell and Underswap, people just weren't used to the idea of AUs having owners. Even though those all AUs also had owners. Well, the interesting thing is the creator of Underfell came back and started posting a lot of their vision for the AU, and it's so much better than a lot of the fan and stuff. Like, for one, it's not just angst and murder, it's much more kind of Burton-esque darkness, I guess? I don't know. Oh. Kind of like- Mercano, you have hit the nail on the- Oh boy, time to take a look. That bothers me so yeah, honestly, so many people, not only, I think Papyrus gets a lot of really bad fan art too, especially recently, I've noticed, I don't want to like name specific names because that would be mean, but I've seen a lot of people like draw him super feminine lately and that bugs me so much. <laughs> yeah, I've tried talking to the people and saying, hey, if you're going to present, if you're going to be so disconnected and try to treat story shift virus like it's just Toriel but with bones can you please just make it its own thing and start trying to get it used yeah well they're basically writing the coattails of a popular au if they aren't respecting the source material for it which i don't think is the way to go although but people you first well funny story uh i heard from over in team switch that someone was making a alter tale Toriel fan game and the creator of Alter Tale got really mad about it because it wasn't 100% accurate to the original AU. And on one hand, I can understand that frustration, but on the other hand, there were like threats to sue over it. That's going a little too far. We do not want to go. That's just a whole quagmire of legal issues, so let's not. Yeah, I just think. We can talk like normal people. Well, it's like. The thing is, at least what I've found, is you can ask people to please respect your work, but ultimately, at the end of the day, there's only so much a creator can do. And it sucks, because it'd be great if people were more courteous. That's but why yeah, I... going back to... Yeah, yeah sorry. sorry. That's why I try to just, when I see incorrect assumptions about Inverted Fate, I just try my best to inform people. Because there are still people to this day who somehow haven't found the official comic and just make all these crazy assumptions. I think one of the most ridiculous ones I got back earlier in the AU's lifespan was someone being like, Why does Flowey look crazy? He's supposed to look like Kemi! Because they thought- Wrong that... AU! Yeah, exactly. And then another really weird misconception with Inverted Fate was this person on YouTube who hadn't even looked into the AU's info said, I know what this AU is! It's personality swaps! And Asgore has Sans's personality! And Papyrus has Alfie's personality! And this was all purely based on what the characters were wearing. 
the fuck? It was because Asgore had a hood, so they assumed that he had Sans' personality, I guess. It was very unusual. And I assume this person was probably a kid. Probably. And, and I mean, the thing with younger fans is I feel like they're not going to be quite as critical because, I mean, when I was a kid, I wasn't nearly as critical of media in general. Like, there were movies that I liked as a kid that, uh, looking back at them now, are not good. I liked Quest for Camelot as a kid, and that movie has not aged well at all. There are parts of it that still like, like, the animation. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely some nice ideas behind that movie. It's just, like, mostly the execution. It also had some pretty severe tonal whiplash, I feel. All right. Oh yeah, tiny aside, is cereal a soup or a beverage? It's a soup. <laughs> a funny story! I was at Everfree Northwest over the weekend, uh, that's at my little pony convention up in SeaTac. And uh, at the Bronies React panel, there were so many people joking about food, and someone actually asked them that. And then I went up to the mic and asked them if cheesecake is a cake or a pie, and then everyone was like, I think Silver Quill was like, pizza, I mean, pizza is a cheese-based pie, and that's our answer. But it was a pretty fun experience. Yeah, I agree with that, Mick. Good stuff. Yeah, um... As far as following other AUs, yes, I specifically follow uh, Sonic Adventure Grounded, Undertoad, uh, Ruptured Tale is really good. That's the AU by Tile. It's very funny, and it's a post-aborted genocide AU, but one that doesn't take itself too seriously and still has that kind of Undertale humor to it. And, um, I did follow Altered Destiny, but I don't know what Fours is doing with it these days. Uh, Sudden Changes is now being made into a game, and, uh, Tantamount, I really like FMS's ideas. He did a really cool, uh, idea with his, uh, genocide fight. I don't know if he posted part two yet, though, so I don't want to say too much. Don't want to accidentally spoil things because sometimes it's hard to remember what's been posted in secret channels in Discord and which is public. And I don't want to disrespect people's hard work. Because one time, someone leaked spoilers from Inverted Fate Spoiler Corner in a Discord voice chat. It was a group DM, I think, and it was really frustrating to find that out. <sighs> That's why I'm so picky with uh, spoilers, the spoiler roll. Oh yeah, this is the wall market music, I think. Alright, checking this out again. Oh yeah, um, Quest for Camelot had the two-headed dragon that one of them was voiced by... I want to say Eric Idle, and the other one had like the super short stumpy neck. And then it had Jaleel White as an axe chicken for some reason, and he added like nothing to the movie. Okay. So I think I have the rough line work down, so now I just gotta make this look nicer. Clean up. Clean up. Oh gosh. So, when I was little, I actually really liked Barney. I think I liked Barney until I was six or seven. Looking back- Yeah, that sounds about the right. Yeah, looking back, I'm not sure why, but like, as far as preschool shows go, I honestly do think Arthur still holds up really well. And I'm super happy that they, did, they went through with the uh, Mr. Ratbird gay wedding. I think that's a great thing for kids to have exposure to. Mm -hmm. It's nice, because usually in these sort of things, it's like a relative that comes back and maybe cameos in another episode. Meanwhile, Mr. Ratburn's been there since day one. Also, it's just nice to have some gay male representation in a kid show. That and uh, Bo's parents and She-Ra were both really nice to see. Mm. Because usually uh, 
like with uh, Legend of Korra, there was Korosami, and then Steven Universe has uh, Ruby and Sapphire, and I think both of, both of those existing were important, but still, it's nice to see a bit of gay male characters. Let's not forget Rose and Pearl. Oh, One-sided yeah! One-sided love is still important to represent, too. Oh, absolutely. Plus, in Rose's well, case... Alabama. They can... They know what they've done. Oh, gosh. Alabama's done a lot of really dumb stuff lately. <laughs> I'm kind of glad I live in one of the more progressive states. Like, I believe Washington was one of the earlier states to legalize gay marriage, and we legalized marijuana, too. Let me double-check on some things. Okay. Yeah, I might double-check, uh my editor's comments in my pick in a second, but I'll try not to take too long because I want to keep you guys entertained with my drawings. Uh, one thing I like to do when I do line art is vary the line weight, so I'll have stuff in the back have heavier lines as if those are like where shadows are falling. And this yeah. picture specifically is just line art because that's the clean, oh no. clean line art is basically the $15 patron bonus. You can have up to two characters. So I try to Wash. make that worthwhile. How long is this? Wash your been? line art. Yeah, pretty much. Now I want to eventually, at some point, doodle some wash away shenanigans or power wash. wash the uh, robot enemy in the core that was based off of Washua. Oh, we've gotten to the Honey Bee Inn, or have we? Oh gosh, yes, the Honey Bee Inn. Now, a allegedly, a Square Enix employee gave some info on the remake, and take this with a huge grain of salt, but apparently the Honey Bee Inn is still in the game. And I am very grateful if that is the case. Because God, Honey I hope so. I just want all the stupid parts of Final Fantasy VII to be there. All the shenanigans. I want people to know that FF7 isn't just brooding angst. There are dark moments, but then there's just- there's a very irreverent sense of fun to it. Now, I wonder if they'll have any of the cut content put back in. I heard that they actually might. There's rumors that the unused characters, uh... I know one of them was like Cobalt 14 or 15. There's rumors that those will be in the game. And if that means fleshing out Red 13's arc, yes please, give my boy Nanaki some love. <laughs> He's my favorite party member, and I was so bummed that the compilation, like, did next to nothing with him. Purely because they felt he was too hard to animate. Yeah, uh, er, let's be Fur physics back in the day were definitely. I think it was. Oof. I think it was the four-legged movement more than anything. Okay. Uh, does anyone know any free drawing programs? Gimp. Gimp. That's what I use. I've heard a media. Uh, I think it's like Media Bang or something like that is pretty good too. And Fire Alpaca. That one's a lot like Paint Tool Sci, but it's free. Okay, let me just. Uh, do Do you some... think we'll see? Do you think we'll see any Crisis Core or Advent Children content? Probably not, considering those different timeline sort of scenarios. It depends. I could see, see like, it... a reference to them. Yeah, I could see, like, nods to Angeal, but I'm less sure about Genesis, because from what I understand, uh, he was basically uh, part of a promotional deal with Gact, who is, like, a Japanese performer or model, I forget which. But yeah, Genesis uh, is basically his kind of self-insert character in terms of design. So you found some overly preachy, pretentious poetry. You throw it in the trash. <laughs> Amazing. That would be actually funny. Story is I do reference uh, Genesis and Angeal in my Kingdom Hearts fanfic because I like to kind of flesh out Radiant Garden a bit. And so I had those guys as part of the Royal Guard, as well as, like, Ali Ali Alias and uh, Dylan and Brig and stuff. I am a Kingdom Hearts nerd. My 
fanfic is over a million words long. Man, listening to some of this FF- does it work now? Is everyone able to see the video? I just want to make sure that it's visible. Yeah. Well, it's... it's offline for me. That's really weird. It might take a second because of the latency. I did hit start stream. Oh, live and visible. All Yay! Right. I'm glad Sorry, you Sorry, chat. I re I lost stuff. It's sad. Okay, let's see. It's really just these hands that are giving me trouble because I'm trying to figure out claw positions. I might just do it like this. Yeah, it might work. The claw. The claw. I can't believe they're making a fourth Toy Story. I don't know how to feel about that movie at all. Maybe it'll be good. I just wish Pixar would do more original movies, because I feel like, other than Coco, it's really just been a lot of sequels and prequels lately. Well, Inside Out existed in The Good Dinosaur, that's right. Yeah, people have mixed feelings about The Good Dinosaur, and... Uh... Our viewers are gone? What happened to our viewers? Hold on, let me check the chat. Wait. We got a lot of users in chat. Well, oh, for some- oh, there it goes. For some reason it was showing that nobody was currently watching. Huh. Must have been a Twitch glitch. And Twitch and glitch rhyme, so that works. Okay. Twitchy glitchy. Okay, I can turn off the red layer again, and then I'll just- I think what's throwing me off is I'm not sure if I gave Miser thumbs. Good to double check that. The battle sprite doesn't seem to have them. I... Yeah. Okay. Man, though, even though this uses basically PS1 MIDI samples, the songs hold up really well. I think that just goes to show that good composition can really make a difference. And that's one thing I kind of wish people in the Undertale music com community worked on more, because a lot of people, they just want to have really fancy VSTs and mixing. And while mixing is important, a good mix won't save a poor composition. It won't make God I wish a you Lord. God I wish It won't make a generic megalo any more interesting if that generic megalo has good mixing. <laughs> It'll make it easier to listen to, but it won't make it interesting to listen to. But I'm the oddball who just really is done with megalos. Let's see, if the hands were like this... Okay, check in a little thing. Check in chat, too. <laughs> <laughs> I loved that! Part where they threaten to castrate Don Corneo, and I really hope they keep Aerith's kind of spunky side, because I feel like in other games she's a lot softened, and it's funny because in the original game, uh, Tifa's the one who's more soft-spoken and feminine in terms of behavior, whereas Aerith is very com a lot- she has a much more confident air to her, and the aforementioned balls. I do hope that Eris isn't just sweet and calm, too. Yeah, no, in the original game, she's got fire to her, and it's great. She's just a lot more fun in the original FF7. Yeah, it feels like it's, they kind of played up her martyrship and then started wiping away the stuff that might be considered a, too grating. 
kind of like they did with Gwen Stacy over the years. They did that to Kyrie in KH3, and that bugged me so much. Because, like, Kyrie in the first game, oh my gosh, she is sassy as heck. Her, one of the very first things she does is whack Sora over the head. And in the second game, she's willing to throw down with Saix barehanded until Riku shows up. Like, that girl's got fire, and the manga, fortunately, preserves that part of her character. She even punches Demix at one point. I mean... Let's see. I don't think there... Yeah, it doesn't say- it doesn't say that there is a date out for the remake. Hi, dogs. But I think that some parts of the script might be tweaked because I think the big- some of the characters, especially around a certain scene in the cross-dressing side quest, might not be as see. Yeah, the thing with Leon's gang, um... They should have been in KH3, and they should have been there to be super skeptical of people like Ienzo, because as much as I really liked Ienzo in that game, there's the fact is, they used to work with Xehanort, and so if Leon's gang were actually acknowledged, they'd probably be super skeptical of letting them just roam around Radiant Garden. I get that Nomura felt there were too many characters to juggle, though. It's just frustrating because Leon. <laughs> oh gosh. Let me check the chat. That's so. F that's funny. So funny to hear, considering how many characters are already in the game and how many of them are original. Uh huh. Well, it's just um, frustrating to me because Leon and those guys were there from the very first game, and so they were pretty important parts of the Kingdom Hearts story. The Final Fantasy characters were people for Sora to aspire to be, the kind of heroes that he could kind of mature into, and I thought they were very important to have because of that. I mean, I guess now that Terra, Aqua, and Ven are a thing, but even so, I mean, that's not going to stop me from using them in my pick because I YOLO it. I write my stories mm -hmm. with things that I think will make me happy and will make other people happy. And that's the great thing about fandom. If the canon doesn't satisfy, you can make your own stories set in that universe. I reached out to reality and replace it with my own, basically. Yes. Yes. I really like this boss theme. It's catchy as heck. Almost done with the miser. And then I get to doodle some papyrus and mad dummy antics. I just need to decide. I kind of want to draw it so mad dummy is on a therapist couch and papyrus is trying to get her to just sort out her anger issues. I think that might be entertaining. It would. Oh. Also, for those of you wondering about the Undyne fight, uh, when we do get all the footage in, I'll do what I did with the trial and do editing streams. So there's that to look forward to. Mind you, we won't have all the footage done until around the end of June. But it's going to be a huge fight, so we hope that the wait will be worth it because Sparks has done a phenomenal job with the animation. Dang it, I should not have the urge to replay this in FF9 when I have my flipping backlog to get through. And I need to play FF6 at some point, too. Ooh, Cosmo Canyon. Ooh. This was, like, my favorite uh, town theme when I was younger. Oh, wait, no, this isn't Cosmo Canyon. This is Red 13's introduction theme. It just uses the same light motif. Yeah. Yeah. Goodly. Spepera. <laughs> Spepera. I need to actually do that fight in a under swap at some point. Because um? 
Didn't know Underswap was in Final Fantasy. <laughs> okay, so there's a story. Uh, Team Switched did a, an April Fool's RPG Maker game, and it was a lot of fun. But basically, it's a really jokey Underswap demo that includes such shenanigans as Speparoth, <laughs> which is just... Spep is like this goofy doodle based on the concept art papyrus, except sans, and it's kind oh, of been an uh, in-joke for Team Switched. We have that. I barely, I barely know about my own AU. It's hard keeping up with stuff. I understand. I kind of have to keep up with things because my server's pretty darn big these days, so I get a lot of AU information slash exposure. I mean, I think we actually have more members than AU Hell now. Good. Let it burn. Huh, I, I might... Feel... Hmm, this mm -hmm. feels a little stiff. I might give it a bit more of a flop, so it looks more like a bag. I realized that there was some art that I did a while back that I hadn't actually time to put it up, I guess. Post the arts. Would it be alright if I linked it? Yeah, go for it. I don't mind. Alright. You are a guest in the stream. You must follow your heart. I should actually Google an image of a money bag so I can do this a little better. <laughs> money bag. Okay, yeah, that helps a lot. Okay, this can make me draw a much better money bag. For starters, it's more of a kind of lumpy thing. Pilling. Yay! Huh? I feel much better now. Oh, this is the music for the motorcycle minigame, that's right. Vroom vroom. such a memorable soundtrack that even if it takes me a moment, I'm like, yeah, I remember when this played. Yeah, I remember this thing from a game I've never played. Honestly, if you can get past some of its 1997 rust, FF7 is a pretty fun RPG, and from what I understand, there's some really nice mods for the Steam version. Oh, I'm sure, I just have a lot of other stuff that keeps on coming up first. Oh, I understand. Like <laughs> I know that feel. Part of me wants to get the uh, Steam version of FF9, even though I already own it on the PlayStation 3, specifically for the Moggery mod, which basically takes the uh, low-res PS1 backgrounds and uses uh, digital upscaling to make them look incredible. Mm. It's honestly really cool. They did it for FF7 as well, and I think one of the Resident Evil names also has a mod with that kind of high-res upscaling. Would not be surprised. There's a blob on Yadria. It's oh, like- no, Too much! It's like adaptive learning technology or something. Something like that. Oh dear, I need to fix some of that line art that accidentally got erasered. Okay, checking chat again. Snack dog! Uh, murder. Snack dog! <laughs> so cute! Aw, those Pokemans are cute too! Heck. Team Whoopass! In any case it wasn't obvious, yes, they are huge Powerpuff Girl references. I am fine with that because PPG is great. At least the original. I mean, AU Lord, you don't have Dorky in your name, so I think she wins by default. You're not dorky enough to have Dork in your name. Everyone can be a dork if they believe in themselves. I do not have the sole ownership of dorkitude. Everyone has a little bit of dorkism buried deep within their soul. So Gross. reach out. 
Reach out and remember, you too can be a dork if you believe in the me that believes in your dorkitude. Yeah. Getting there. Just a little bit more to clean up, and then it's the main Posture thing. Posture dragon. Oh yeah, I should actually save this before I forget, in case. <laughs> yes. Please. There we go. And drink some water. Hydrate yourself. Oh yeah, especially when I'm talking on mic. <laughs> bra. I'm guessing bra. Oh gosh. See, part of me is like, maybe he just named it Rock, because what is putting effort into a name, but... Man, I'm sure there's a pun oh in there. Oh my god! It's Dwayne! <laughs> that... that is inspiring. That is truly inspiring. Dwayne the Rock. Shoot, I did the G backwards. <laughs> I'm gonna have to flip that. Let me just... <laughs> Easily done. Yeah, especially because this is just a line art pick, so let me just quickly... shoot the doop Okay, let me just... And where is the option to flip? Uh, it's oh. under the table. Oh, wait, no, that's rotating the document. Hold on. Edits, rotate, oh, hold on, it's actually right here, whoop. There we go, easy peasy. Oh yeah, this is the world map music. With Tifa's leitmotif. I want to see the rest of On the Way to a Smile and... Oh! On the Way to a Smile! That's a Regis's fanfic! Nice! Oh wait, no! Sorry! That's a fanfic! <laughs> Rapid typing. Yeah, I got on the way- because there's a Kingdom Hearts fanfic with the exact same name. <laughs> Specifically as a reference to that. Ah, uh, references. When they get all tangled up. It's in everything! <sighs> well, I'm pretty sure Regis did that as a reference to those FF7 novels, because that fic actually did have- I think it had Denzel in it anyway. I know I've read some Kingdom Hearts stories that included Denzel. One of them hasn't been worked on in years, and that makes me sad, because it was one of the few Riku replica-centered fanfics. Uh... Hi, boy. Clone Boy deserved he better. He did. I'm, like, so salty with how KH3 tied up his story arc. Fortunately, I don't have to worry about that, because my stuff is AU. It's long since been AU. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean... It's to a point where a KH3 equivalent, if it even happened, would be so radically different. Now that reminds me, I really need to do artwork of Antipode Shion because due to circumstances in the story, she has a different design. She's actually become a bear. She is attacking everything. Well, I mean, she's she... had enough of this shit. I mean, she did absorb Lexius's power, so she's, like, incredibly terrifying in terms of power at this moment. And that pleases Marnusha, who is using her. 
Also, a lark seems there too. Also, plucking. Okay, almost there. Maybe I will make this little part of the money bag. Hmm, let me look at the Google references again. I feel like the. <laughs> Could use some more wrinkles, maybe. Kind of. Although, no, if it's being dangled, then the bottom would probably have more weight on it because the coins would be toward the bottom. These aren't anti gravity monies. Though it wouldn't be anti gravity chocolate. Papyrus probably has invented anti gravity many things. Purely because he wanted to see what would happen. He's done some weird science. Also, oh, I yes, I remember that. Also, I still love the fact that my mom got like super into JoJo okay. the moment Kira appeared. Like last week, she was super hyped for Kira, or maybe it was the week before. But yeah, we're almost to the end of Diamond is Unbreakable on Diamond is Unbreakable now, and I'm curious what she'll think of the end of that series, because it gets very intense. JoJo is an experience. Cool. Cool. Just gotta touch up the foot, and I think the other wing, and then I can move on to the other patron request. Okay, let's just move this guy. Oh, wait, no, 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 have no. you both watched JoJo from part one together? Ah, uh, yes, yes we have. Uh, we've been watching the English dub. I originally watched in Japanese because the dub wasn't a thing yet. And I've seen up to midway into part five, but I've gotten so sidetracked that I need to catch up on part five. But now that Star vs. is over for good, that's one show that I can cross off the list of things to keep up with, so maybe I can squeeze JoJo back in there. Star vs. had an interesting ending. I don't want to spoil it in case anyone here A watches and B hasn't seen it yet, but I personally had some issues with it. Mostly because I feel like it should have been a two-parter instead of a single 22-minute episode. But that happens. Yeah, that can be a typical issue. Yeah, it's over. It's dead. Yep, it concluded. I really, really wish Star vs. had handled its shipping better, though. Like, all across the board, it made some very odd decisions with the way it handled its endgame ship. By teasing other relationships first and just... I just don't like love triangles or love squares very much. Well, look on the br bright side, Beef. That now you don't have to worry about constantly trying to catch up. Yep. It's just a shame because, shipping stuff aside, I do think parts of Season 4 and Season 3 were generally pretty good. I mean, I do think I like that approach more than a lot of harem anime tends to. True. I mean, teams... A lot of harem anime, you can tell who they're going to end up with, and they they basically don't treat any of the other love interests as viable. They just play it up for fan service. Yeah. Even though... Eh. See, one thing I wish, and this is true of cartoons, anime, and just media in general, is that we'd have less drawn-out build-up to relationships getting together, and more time spent with the characters actually being in that relationship, and exploring how that changes their character dynamic, and how they juggle that with whatever else is going on in the show. Well, let's be fair, horror anime also has a lot of build-up that it needs to work towards. Wink. Oh gosh. And it doesn't always pull through. <laughs> some do, though. Some absolutely do. Okay. Almost done. Check in the chat again. 
<laughs> Love dodecahedrons. Like, okay, so I actually do joke with my friends when we watch Cardcaptor Sakura about how it's kind of turned into a love hexagon or octagon. Though I think in that case it's a lot more innocent than a serious love triangle thing. Because most of them are little kids. But I still want to punch Ariel in the face. <laughs> He's just so... I don't know, I'm sure he'll get better later, but it's like... Dude, you're deliberately just toying with Sakura and her friends. Chill, buddy. <laughs> oh, you know more stuff than I do, so you're probably laughing majestically. <laughs> It is kind of sad that <laughs> Dork punches anime child in the face. I wouldn't literally punch a child, it's just... Gosh, he's just really, really shady, and I worry for the other kids in the show. It is kind of a shame that with a lot of romance stuff, that there's so much focus on them getting together, and they barely spend any time together. Yeah, that's actually why my, uh fic for the Kingdom Hearts Big Bang, uh, I'm doing something really almost unheard of in a Kingdom Hearts story and having two characters hook up really early on because they would have had the childhood to get close anyway and then, well, when the adventure kicks off and all that crazy Kingdom Hearts shenanigans comes in, I think it'll be interesting to see how they deal with it when they barely got a chance to even let it soak in that they're a thing, and then, whoops, sorry, your world got destroyed. Riku Kairi, right? Yes. Of course. <laughs> I think the only seri romance series I read that had the couple actually get together, and that was a good chunk of the story, was uh, Change 1, 2, 3. Now, just as a clarifier, it's kind of pervy. It's definitely made for an older audience, so don't look it up if that's not your thing, but... Um, I would... It, it... Oh, sorry, you first. <laughs> the basic premise is, uh... Main character has a crush on a shy girl, but it turns out that she has DID, and each of her oh. other personalities also fall in love with him. That's interesting. Um, one series that handles its romance really well is My Love Story, which also doesn't beat around the bush, and it is just super wholesome. Oh my gosh. Stars yeah, and Mekano was talking about that, as well as his and her circumstances. Oh, nice! Yeah, My Love Story not only is wholesome, but it's one of the funniest anime I have seen. Like, the comedy is just really sincere. And it really comes from the characters. Okay, I think that's about good to go. So I think it's time to figure out what the heck I'm doing with the Mad Dummy and Papyrus picture. So I'm gonna save this guy here, and they are flying in the air. I'll zoom out a little so everyone can see the... Wait, I just need to scroll. But yeah, here is the miser line art for Spy. And now... I like to make my art at a huge DPI because I feel like if it's really big, then I can scale it different ways and it won't be like really low quality. So anyway, now that this is done, I need to quickly do some Google referencing. I'm just going to send a message to my editor real quick. Mm -hmm. Cool. So now, I'm going to quickly therapist couch. I just realized the couch that Rarity likes to flop on looks a lot like a therapist couch. It's a faint pink couch. Ah, okay, that makes sense. Gosh, though, that's just sad to think. Well, not really sad, but it's kind of bittersweet knowing that, uh, my Little Pony Friendship is Magic is also ending this year. 
But honestly, a nine year run is incredibly good for any cartoon. Hmm. Okay, so let's see. I think I might... I should have done this one in a, a horizontal arrangement. Oh well, I've, I've got a big canvas. Okay, let's see. How does one draw a couch? Well, first you draw a bed, and then you bend out. <laughs> yeah, MLP is ending. It's on its last season. It's been a really good season so far, too, honestly. I really loved the last episode that aired, uh, Frenemies. Very fun. Has a very catchy song. I'm saying very a lot. Okay, it, your mileage may vary. That, too. But honestly, I like what they're doing with the villains. Also, I really I... can't dislike Starlight Glimmer as much anymore because her voice actor is so nice, and she just loves working on Pony, so it's like, oh, I can't be mad about this character, she's just loving what she does. I haven't watched a lot of MLP in a while, but I do know that T-Rex and Chrysalis were holding hooves with a, 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 a full? Oh, Cozy Glow! Yeah, uh, Cozy Glow. She's one of the more recent villains. She is hilarious. Okay. She's kind of like Darla Dimple, if Darla Dimple was a pony. Uh, I need to keep my... Sense. I need to keep perspective consistent. Actually, I should probably... This is going to be really shoddy, but I'm going to try and make my life a little easier. Even though this one, this one, unlike Miserm, is just going to be a sketch, but I want to at least make it... I have standards. Yeah. Okay, so let's I have very high standards. I can make... Ah, uh, you have standards! No! Me, 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 You know, like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. That helps a little, at least. I think this is the Chocobo Farm music, actually, but it's been a while. Chocobos! Chocobos are so cute! Oh my gosh! Chocobos and Moogles. I'm sad that Chocobos aren't in Kingdom Hearts. I would... I love Chocobo. But why? Why? Because they'd be cute! Just no, why aren't they here? I don't know. Okay. But they eat Jiminy, is that why? <laughs> oh gosh. Check and chat? <laughs> yes. Honestly, the thing with MLP is, it's a fun show. I It's definitely not for everyone. And people who try to, like, really push other people to watch it are taking it too far, but it's a fun animated show with uh, sharp writing and very enjoyable characters. I like Rainbow Dash. She's probably my favorite because she's very competitive and snarky, and I tend to really like those kind of characters. See Sonic. Well, there's at least one character. What? Oh yes, Fluttershy. She's so cute! Actually, I really I really love that Fluttershy has become more confident in more recent seasons. I'm here to kick ass and take names, and I'm all out of that. Okay, now I'm gonna pull up a reference for Zimad Jumi so that I can get her design details down. Even though I design these characters, I want- sometimes I don't remember every detail perfectly. You have so much to keep a track of that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is one of my favorite arrangements of the Chocobo theme. Okay.
Rarity is also a very good one. Honestly, I find I pretty much like all the main six. When I first started watching, I was more ambivalent to some than others, but Rarity really grew on me because she wasn't just a... Like, the, her character archetype could have so easily been handled in a way that had not much depth, but they really made her shine. And I appreciate that they show different ways of handling female characters who are strong, but aren't just your quote-unquote strong, independent woman. Like, there's plenty of ways to be a girl, and they are valid. shaking a fist at Papyrus because she really doesn't want to be on this therapist couch. <laughs> like, super angry. I still love that I gave Mad Mew Mew the menacing kanji as one of her attacks. I think Epic was the one who suggested that. I mean, it only makes sense. easily have been the token bitch of the group. She really could have, but no, she's honestly got a lot of depth to her, and I really appreciate that she's not just into fashion, but she creates her fashion, and I think that's really cool to see. Mm -hmm. Thinking. <laughs> Right, give me the bigger pecs. Of course, Papyrus has to be ma muscular and manly. I need to do more art of his really crude uh, victory screens from Hotland, like Anne Handsome Win. That gag, I, I really loved it, even though it was the stupidest thing I put in the comic, probably. I just want to get rid of that one syllable for reason annoying me. Oh, nice! You're really in for some wacky shenanigans in Hotland. That arc was a ton of fun. Okay, actually, I think Papyrus should probably be moved back a little from the therapy couch. Right now, it looks like the couch is sitting on its foot. Ouch! Okay, let me just kind of... Thank goodness for shift. Just move this dude. Actually, be touching the couch, I just figure. Right, shift. Is that part of the background? Oh, 
Oh well. It's not like there's gonna be a background in the final drawing. Having him up a bit where it's just I'm standing on you. Okay, so we have this little waist. of the sketch, I guess. Ah. Should I... Probably should have asked earlier. Are you going to be putting this up on your YouTube later? Yes, yes. I need to start uploading more often to my YouTube, so stuff like these art streams are definitely going to be archived there. The only reason I didn't archive the previous one... Actually, I don't know why I didn't archive the previous one, because I do have the recording still. Well, that'll be... There. You got a little something extra for your patrons, I guess. Yep. But yeah, I'll definitely uh, be sure... I might do some editing on it, but the bulk of the stream will be viewable for the lovely peeps on the YouTube. Though I think I will definitely give it to patrons a little bit early, just like maybe a few days. I definitely need to promote my Patreon more now that they're only giving me, like, next to no hours. I'm not saying everyone has to pay me money, I absolutely don't expect people to do that, especially if they can't afford it. It's just kind of like, hey, I have this thing and it's got cool, exclusive content, check it out. I'll pay you with my firstborn child. Oh my. I wonder where my cat is. Let's do it. I'm never going to have kids. Ah. Same. No, it's okay. I got cats. Well, a cat, but you know. I have a nephew. He works. He's good. Yeah. We got some new kids in the family anyway. Uh, cousin's got a kid. Actually, two kids now. Smalls. All these smalls. They are babies. But my mom's really chill about it, honestly. She's not too upset. Oh god, being a teacher. That's like 30 kids each year? I really gotta commend people who work in the teaching profession, honestly. It's gotta be a ton of work. trying to be encouraging, but she'd be like, no, get me off of this stupid couch. Mm. She just wants to get her revenge on the human who totally embarrassed her. Honestly, the gag I have with Mad Dummy for the Hotland arc was really fun. I never actually anticipated that character would get so much screen time, but it worked out. People really seem to enjoy the antics. Yeah, Pappy. Yeah, Papyrus. Heck yeah. should know what this music is for. I've been able to recognize- Wait, is that what I sound like on stream? Oh dear. Oh, god, I got a hundred students. That's... that's rough.
Honestly, the one thing I'm kind of anxious about, like, when it comes to my fanfic, is just how the heck people are going to react to the unexpected developments involving a certain crossover dynamic. I think I know what you're talking about, so I will keep quiet. It's not like I meant to ship ring a bell in Aqua, it just kinda happened, gosh! Ah, that's what it is I was thinking about. I wasn't sure if that was spoilers or not, so... I see. Honestly, I'm just kind of like, shoot, if my characters are doing a thing and it's not even planned, but it's what the characters are naturally gravitating towards, I'm like, okay, fine, you can get out of your rebellious teenage phase now. Fine, your curfew is slightly lifted. It's just kind of funny because a lot of writers experience that, where the characters just kind of do what they want. <laughs> Yep, that's definitely happened to me last night. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. I think some things in Inverted Fate kind of just happened while I was scripting stuff that wasn't even originally outlined. Just, okay, I guess this is happening. I'm just trying to think of good examples of that, because it's, it's been a while since I've written a part. But wow. Teaching high school, that's gotta be wild too, cause just those teenage years with them hormones and that rebellious streak. Though not all teenagers. And the clicks. Yeah. Not all teens are super rebellious. I was a lot more subdued, and that kinda led to me getting a lot of flack from other students. My high school experience was crippling depression. That didn't really go well. Yeah, my high school experience was not so fun. The only people I really got along with were teachers. School bus rides were the worst. The bus drivers really didn't do much about bullying. They'll be off in a few minutes, fine. For me, it was, like, almost an hour because I was one of the last stops until I got the approval to get off my bus early because they'd, like, do this loop at the restaurant close to my house, but then they'd have to go all the way around before they got to my street. Although we actually have quite a few restaurants in the area. We've got a nice little Italian joint, we've got Subway, we've got a Japanese restaurant, we've got, like, at least two pizza places. Because there's Domino's, and then there's Papa John's. Good luck, Yosh. Good luck. Pap looks so sim sentimental and sympathetic. He just wants to help. <laughs> This is the Junon music for Rufus Shinra's parade. Super mad. Super mad. Super angry. It's funny, someone pointed out that her face kinda looks like a Paper Mario Dry Bones, and that was purely coincidental. I can see it. It does look very skull-like, though, like, definitely. That's bullshit, but I believe it. That's what the face says to me. Yes. That sounds about right. I think it's definitely getting better in some areas, but I think in other areas it's... There's always gonna be some issues. It's just a thing comes to that sort of time period, and that sort of age group. 
Yeah, I think it really also depends on the school, too, as well as the staff. Like, a good staff can really make a difference in terms of how these issues are handled. But, like, what I found, at least growing up with bullying, is that a lot of the people who were bullies, their parents were in the parent-teacher organization, and so their kids kind of got off rather lightly, I found. Oh, social media. Bad double-edged sword. Mostly because the other edge is poking your groin. Not your groin, your stomach. Still an Doesn't hurt that much. So, still in an uncomfortable place to be uh, poked at. Indeed. Okay. Huh. It's actually been... Oh wait, no, it's probably been about two hours because I had to stop the stream, that's right. Yeah, actually... Uh... It's two and a half hours. Oh wow. I mean, I don't mind. It's nice to just relax and draw. Hmm. Need to do more of that. Voice isn't as worn down as I thought it'd be over the time, so that's good. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to have someone else in chat while I'm doing the dudes. You need those dudes. Oh, that kind of doing? Oh my gosh! I walked into that one! I'm a doofbutt! Nah, give it to me. I'm fine. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, she's got the kind of tube arms like Metaton EX. Rather than the segmented, uh... I think that's the wacky inflatable arm. I yeah, she doesn't metal. have the kind of Reploid Robot Master arms that Metaton has, at least in this form. Mm. Midgar towns. Yeah, this one, unlike Miserm, it's gonna be a little bit rougher just because it's a sketch, but I still want to make it look at least like a decent sketch. Also, another show I'm really enjoying right now is uh, DuckTales. The second season's been really solid. Oh, this is the boat music! That's right! Oh. I'm not a part of your system. When they sneak on the boat. The Shinra boat. It's kind of funny how the Sephiroth you see in most of FF7 isn't even the real Sephiroth. It's just a Genova zombie. It's Fethroth. It's Fethroth. It's Jefferoth. Jefferoth is also valid. I feel like I should remember what that's from because it sounds really familiar. Probably. Okay. Let's rotate the canvas. I think this was actually the thing that was originally at anyway. Okay, but let's see, so... Fist. Fist, fist, fist. Of justice.
mean, I could have her giving Papyrus the bird, but that might be a bit mean. <laughs> On the other hand, it wouldn't necessarily be out of character. We'd love to, really, but the fox sensors wouldn't allow it. <laughs> That's just bringing my mind back to the flipping haze code, of all things. Ah, uh, haze code. Die in a fire. Those were dark days, like... From what I understand, the Tex Avery short Red Hot Riding Hood got a lot of neg negativity because of haze code stuff. Because, oh no! There was... You first, you first. There was a sequel where, like, they had wolf pups and, like, Oh, that's bad, because one of them's a wolf, and, like, I mean, valid, there are reasons to be uncomfortable with those kind of ships, but also, it's a Tex Avery cartoon. It's not meant to be taken that seriously. That was actually from a cut version, cut from the original version. Oh, really? That's interesting. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you okay? <laughs> you know what? I'm having Mad Dummy flip Papyrus off. I don't think Papyrus would even care. He's a very tolerant skeleton. Okay, so let's rotate the canvas. Ah, uh, the original conclusion had Grandma marrying the wolf with a shotgun wedding, and oh. having the unhappy couple and their half-human, half-wolf children attend Red Show. That is really twisted. <laughs> I mean, dark humor, for sure. Also, a character of Tex Avery himself was supposed to marry them. Oh wow. Tex Avery, the surprise preacher. Mm -hmm. Alright. Well, let me think. Since this sketch is about done, I should probably open Flash and get that animatic going. Apparently the image is fully inked and uh, painted. Oh wow. I wonder if the original cells and stuff still exist. Um... Uh, if it was animated, they probably have the stills or the cells somewhere. True. Though there are stories of like fires and stuff destroying classic animation roughs. Ah, okay, time to save our little therapy session. Yeah, I think what you were thinking of was a rumor that Wolf and Red married and had a kid, but that was not a thing. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm going there to was a sequel of, of, the, of it, though. Swing Shift Cinderella. Interesting. I actually don't know if I've seen that one. Okay, there's our there's little... And of course, Red would show up in other places because she just became an icon. Yeah, she's one of the really iconic Tex Avery characters. Alright, well, just give me a moment, guys. I'm going to get some more water, and then I will be right back. I know I've occasionally been almost talking over Dork, and I that's something I need to fix with. Fix on fix stop doing. That's the right. But I'm getting used to it. I was considering actually streaming some Shovel Knight stuff because they have their final expansion in the battle mode that's coming up soonish, it seems. Like, it's at most, it seems to be a few months, but 
I don't know, I've just been getting into the game really hard, and I want to play it, get ready for that. been currently going through New Game Plus with Plague. Already finished Spectres. That was pretty fun. She returns from the world of fluids. Now let's see. Just going to open Adobe Animate. It is easy to talk over each other, but it's still something that... Something that can be worked. God, King Knight's campaign just looks so good. I gotta can't wait. Yeah, I. Oh, hey, thanks for pledging, Mechano. Really appreciate it. Oh shit! If you have a, if you have a particular art request you want, I can get that out of the way before I work on the animatic. I mean, I certainly don't mind. So let's give this a try. Original bitch. I might clear my cache too, because sometimes that can help, and I have been streaming for a bit, plus the flippin' Final Fantasy VII soundtrack. Let's see. Yep, I'm doing a quick little cache clear. Oop. Okay. So, I'm going to quickly just add, um... Adobe Animate to my, uh... Good to know, good to know. Though it might be a good idea to send that in a message outside of the stream since, well... That's gonna be lost just a time once it's finished. Or if you refresh the page like I've been doing. Yeah. Okay, just quickly, right, just trying to remember. Oh, it's window capture, that's right. Uh, Adobe Animate. <coughs> Nothing gets cut off while I work. Nope, nope, it seems like it's good to go. Hi, Asgore. Okay. Yeah, I might- Hi, Asgore. Okay, so I might do- Might have to pause the music just for a sec, because while I scrub on the uh, timeline, that's going to make sound too... Unless I mute Flash, which I guess is possible. Actually, I can probably just mute the music temporarily, and what does that do? That... Yeah, let me just... Let me just quickly... Here... Let me see if that... Okay. Oh shoot. If I set it back to stream, I just want to make sure that... Okay, yeah, I can temporarily mute the music and we can keep our... Cool, uh... Actually, if I set it to event, there. Okay. So, trying to think what I should work on next, because this is the current state of the animatic, and I'll turn the Final Fantasy music back on since. Alright, so let's see. Tutorials frames are mostly done, although I do see a slight little color hiccup right here. So let me just quickly unlock Tutorial. Fix that up. So the nice thing about doing animatics in Flash is that you can just draw them lickety split, and it's kind of nice. Okay. Here, 
I see the line wasn't closed, so... That's the tricky thing with Flash, too, is that when you want to close the line art, it doesn't always actually close the line art. The other thing I don't like about Flash is that unless you set a layer specifically... Oh. Oh dear. Uh-oh. Let me just lock these layers real quick. There we go. Yeah, unless you set a layer... Unlock the wrong layer! Go me! That explains a lot. Okay, I want to be on Twitter lines. So, flipping, let me take care of that. Well, that was a doof burger moment on my part. Whoopsie! Ah, no! Flash! By default, anything you erase will affect all unlocked layers, so it's kind of a pain. Delete everything. There we go. Now her hand isn't transparent. <laughs> okay, so I'm just trying to- Oriel becomes a ghost bitch slap ass gore. Oh gosh. So let me just check the chat again, see what I missed. Not much. And yeah, I'm totally fine with doing uh, sprites for patron requests. It's nice to do some pixel art. And hey, it can always be something I work on in the next stream, unless it's like super confidential, in which case I'm totally fine just doing it off, off stream. So just thinking, because there are a few things I could work on here. I could do the rest of Asgore's lines and coloring, or I could use on this layer. I see, this is just a solid color. I think I was using it to test things. Yeah, I was using it to test things because when I switch to the battle sprite colors, then it's going to be on a black backdrop. So I wanted a color where I could still do the black and white stuff without it, like, blending in. So this was purely visual. What was, what was this one? Oh, oh, yeah. These were like really crude background scri scribbles I did specifically. Okay. So what the heck is which layer is this one? Okay, it's beachy color. Okay. So I think what I want to do here is so I create a new layer and start. I wonder if I can convert this keyframe to a symbol and then lower the opacity. Hmm. Yeah, because the problem with these backgrounds is like they were basically just me doing scribbles to figure out um, roughly. What the heck is this? Okay. Uh, New BG, just so I don't forget what the heck it is. These are going to be backgrounds. But yeah, basically, I did all these like really painted, rough, sketchy backgrounds because I had no idea what the final back. Oh, uh, that was before I decided to do this part in sepia tones. Yeah, that's why Torio was black and white in part of the animatic, was because I wanted to have it switch to the battle screen colors when they're confronting each other. But anyway, what I am going to attempt, and this is on attempt, is to... Oh yeah, and I got a little V-cam, that's why some things aren't fully drawn. Okay, so let's lock Asgore lines, and let's the Torio lines are locked again, cool, cool. See if I can cheat this with some vector lines. Okay, we'll start here. I can make these lines thick. 
Maker. Let's make it. Sausage music. Yeah, I'm just here for five hours. Oh wow. Yeah. I'm definitely not gonna like stream like literally all day, but I definitely can keep going at least for a little while. Okay. Vector backgrounds will definitely look a lot cleaner. The hard part is going to be the tiles. Well, uh, tiles. There was that tutorial on how to draw really good tiles, though. That would be n that's nice. Oh, yeah, I should look in- Oh yeah, I think I saw that on Tumblr, actually. Yeah, you saw that one, for sure. this theme. It's very jazzy. Mm -hmm. da -da 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 -da. But I like Kate Sith in general, which is a very unpopular opinion. Then again, I am the biased cat lady. You know, like, yeah. part's gonna be that flipping stained glass window. Uh, pick a god and pray? <laughs> Let me see if I can cheat this a little bit. Ah! I don't think he likes that. Passable. <coughs> Actually, I could probably make my life a whole lot easier if I just copied these squares. Ah! Whoa! Hi! You are not what I intended to do. Oops. squares, but it's something. Honestly, I should practice doing Undertale battle stuff in Flash because I know the basic skills to do that kind of thing in the program. It's just figuring out bullet patterns. Let's delete that one. Yeah, this isn't quite as good as I would have liked. I think I'll just and then and hope to keep them as approximate as possible. Oh yeah, this is the place after they get thrown out of the battle arena. That very sad desert music.
thinking about dinner. Dinner is a good thing to think about. Okay, let me just... Boop, boop, and boop. Actually, I think it should be a slightly yellower orange. There. And then we'll have kind of a more yellowy yellow. Oh, I see. It's because the flipping, dipping lines are left open. Let me just fix that one. This stuff is outside the canvas. It doesn't matter. Except for the flipping window. shoddy because most of it exists outside the frame. So I can get away with cheap shortcuts like this, but anyway. Nah, that's good. Set this to black. Hey, oh, there we go. This wasn't picking in my brush strokes. been checking chat just because I've been so focused on this, but I'll check in just a sec. Mm. Hey, oh. Hello, Blank. Welcome to the party! Yeah, it's not perfect, but it gets the job done. Where's the color picker? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, good lord. <laughs> Nothing like seeing a reveal for a mother, a character's mother, and then scrolling down and seeing Kyoya in the comments. Oh no. Okay, let's insert blank keyframe. Okay, so I guess this is the part where I pause the music. Okay, let me just. I'm not sure if the render will actually pick up the. Let's test. So, it's not going to be a lot new. I just want to see how much of this background actually fits in the final render. Okay, I guess the music is temporarily muted. So yeah, cool. I can duplicate this keyframe. I can quickly copy keyframes for any other spots that use that same background. I can be super sneaky. Yeah, this one, I believe, used the same. Okay. So let's paste that in. And then it stays like this. Until, well, this one's a new, another blank keyframe. Cool, cool. What's the desert all? Oh gosh, I can't remember. It's been a while since I played. But you're basically kind of thrown into a desert prison underneath Gold Saucer. And have to fight your way out. And Barrett meets an old pal. Which, some dramas. 
Oh yeah, Dine. Dine's his name. Not to be confused. Drama in my Final Fantasy? More likely than you know. Okay. Actually, what I should do here... Actually, yeah, that works rather well. It's doing good. You know, just hanging out. Yep. Oh, hey, it's the actual Cosmo Canyon theme. Hey. Here we got it. Also, thanks to all the new Twitch followers. Hey. Good, good. Yeah, I'm definitely going to try to use my Twitch more. I might do some video game live streams, so... I might do a poll on Patreon to see what kind of games on my backlog people would be interested in seeing, like, as a priority. Because eventually I'm gonna have to play them all anyway, it's just kind of like, letting people get some input, I guess. Now I'm going to do a thing that is semi-lazy, but also dish smart. Copy paste. I'd definitely like to get into streaming games more. And then edit. How do I flip this? It's been so long since I've used Flash regularly. I used to know all this stuff when I was in college. There we go. I don't know. I keep forgetting that D duplicates in Flash. Not. Okay. There we go. What would your soul trait be? My soul trait. That is honestly a good question, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure which traits really suit me personally well. Actually, that should probably be a slightly different color because Asgore's in black. I wonder if I can do a custom color. Let's see. Yes, I can. Cool. Let's just have it be... Huh. Okay. That's different enough, I guess. Anyway... Let's go back to the previous background just so I can color pick. Okay, color pick done. I don't know what my soul trait would be. Loyalty, maybe? Maybe. Are you saying you're Applejack? I horse. <laughs> Honestly, the th interesting thing just going to Everfree was between panels, they'd play some songs from the show, and it was interesting seeing, like, songs from earlier seasons, just because I'm so used to the more recent episodes, that, like, it was interesting to see how the animation just evolved over the course of the past nine years of Pony. Like, it's one of those things you take for granted when you don't look back and see how, like, at the start they had a lot fewer art assets to work with. Okay, once again, it is time to... Okay, let's do another... Let's do another test and see how this looks.
Obviously, I'm gonna have to turn off the sketch layers. Oh, shoot, I just realized there was a coloring pickup. set this up, I can definitely cheat as far as, like, copy-pasting backgrounds. Mm. Yeah, um, I had fun handling the Cyan Soul in Inverted Fate. It was very different, but honestly, special shout-out to Sparks for suggesting the idea. not a huge deal, and that's not perfect. Animatic. Well, I kind of want to add some windows. Okay. Maybe what I will do is add some, some painting banners, like so. Like one up, one down, one up. Shift this over just a teensy bit. 
bit more, and there we go. And oh no, I didn't mean to duplicate again. Let's see how this looks. At least this gives the background something more interesting. happened. Flash! Oh god. Uh, savior of the universe! And thank you for the kind words. I also would love to see more people just discovering Inverted Fate. Good, I didn't delete everything. That is always wonderful to see. I disagree, Blank. Sonic's movie design looks decent at certain angles. See, the problem, I think, is the face. If they could fix his face, I think it'll just be passable, and I think a full redesign would just be murder on the VFX artists. So I think it would just be wiser for them to do a design that just makes him less uncanny valley. And just a little bit more like Sonic. He doesn't have to be perfect, but... Like that, uh, pre-release poster. That kind of design would be okay. The <laughs> one where he's leaning on the... On, yeah. On the... On the car. The yeah, birds. that one would be cuter, at least. And, like... If they aren't going to make him look like his iconic design, at least do something that's nice to look at. Oh yes, I see you there, kitty kitty. I see you there. It's okay. Jim Carrey Eggman isn't Eggman at all. But Jim Carrey as Jim Carrey is pretty decent. I think he'll at least be entertaining. I don't think he'll be, like... Shakespearean levels of quality, but I don't think anyone expects that. I think they just expect a really campy movie that's probably not going to be very good, but at least it'll get a laugh at just how cheesy it is. I just really question the decision-making process behind the film, though, because... When you compare it to Detective Pikachu, which was like a total love letter to everything Pokemon, it's just kind of like paramount. What were you thinking? Especially because apparently, at least this is what I've heard, I need to actually track down a source, but I saw it somewhere that Paramount wanted to kind of get the movie out in time to compete with Detective Pikachu-ish, like within the same year. I mean, I could see it, but at the same time... Kitty! Yeah, these are so not perfect tiles, but I think only the most nitpicky observers are gonna notice. I'll color them once I feed my kitty. go, I honestly did more animation than I needed to do. Like, these are still just keyframes, but Tori- Oh, hi! I see that her eyes need coloring in. Okay. 
But, like, I did way more frames than I probably needed to. Like, I could have just had her slide across the screen, but instead I actually show her kind of getting down and sliding up to Asgore, with her ears kind of getting flopped like that. I just wanted to add a little bit more flourish to it, I guess. Because I do want to get better at animation. Oh shoot, I just realized what I messed up on. I might actually consider streaming myself working on music sometime too, if that's something that would interest you guys. Give you a little insight into the process with which I go about my, com my composing. I'm up for all kinds of streams. Video game streams, art streams... Hmm... I think there's an issue with the nines here. Just... this... Yeah, that might help if a line here. And maybe now I can color in that tile. What's your opinion on the superhero genre? Um, honestly, I think it can be a lot of fun. I am a fan of, uh, for example, I do like the MCU, I love The Incredibles, and Big Hero 6, both the movie and the TV series, are excellent. I would say if- I'm not hmm? sure of the genre, honestly, because well, there's just so much variation in it. That's actually a very good co counterpoint, honestly. Okay, so I'm trying to think, do I put another banner on this wall, or do I put another window on the wall? Hmm. <laughs> well, you might want to color in those tiles on the left of the screen. Oh, uh, well, I, there's... Oh, shoot. Yeah, yeah these ones... Yeah, a little bit of orange there. Yeah, I see what you mean. I just need to decide before I start copying this background and scaling it. Because what I'm gonna do for some of the close-ups is just upscale this background. Mm -hmm. So we got Toriel sliding in, and I'll fix her eyes later. Right now I just want to get the placeholder background. But it is starting to come along, and I'm happy for that. Let me just make sure... okay. Yeah, this needs to be a blank keyframe so that I can... Yeah, this I'll just copy the background from earlier, but scale it up. Someone actually suggested doing this whole thing in sepia tones, and I'm not 100% sure about that yet. I think it works best for the flashback. flashback. Yeah, that's, like, I feel like having different color palettes for, like, like, the start of it will be a normal color, and then the sepia flashback, and then it switches to the just pure black and white. Just to convey different things. But yeah, like... Megamind... Megamind's a good movie? What yeah, Megamind's... What's your opinion on the DCEU? Mixed bag. Um, I really liked Shazam and Wonder Woman. Both of those movies were entertaining, though I think Shazam was more fun. Like, that's one thing I really appreciate about it, is that a lot of times superhero movies nowadays are trying to be a bit more serious, but Shazam just felt like it was having a good time. And it was very sincere, which is another thing I always appreciate. Like, something can be incredibly cheesy, but if it's, like, super passionate about that cheese, then... Yeah, I love it. Like, Kingdom Hearts, for all its questionable writing, it does still have... It's very passionate in its cheesiness. Oh, hi, Cookie. Come on now, you silly cat. Aw, she's just giving you little nuzzles, sweet little kitty. Good baby. Anyway, let's see. You know what? I'm going to convert this flipping background into a symbol. Which is symbol. 
there. That, I think I'm, I think I'm winding down. Mentally, that's okay. So. If you want to peace out, that's fine. I can keep working for a little bit. I'm probably not going yeah. to like stay for too much longer. Maybe another hour just to get some more work on this animatic, and then I'll post the updated work in progress to Patreon, I guess. Nice. But the full version will go up on my YouTube channel as well as this live stream. Alrighty. Well, you have a well, good time. Gonna... Thanks for joining Thank me. You. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Have a good time. Thank you. Be down to do this again sometime. Yeah, sure. Whenever is a good time. That would awesome. That would be awesome. All right. Take care, everybody. All right. Now I just need to decide. Banners or windows? <laughs> I just realized I could have made my life a whole lot easier by just making the banners with shapes. So I think I'm going to do that. Just for this one. Let's give it a nice little... That's not the line tool. That is not the line tool. Okay. Let's see. Actually, hmm. I should probably make this banner where I can actually see it. Oh, hold on. Might have to mute for a second, but I'll still be working.
All right, I'm back. Uh, my mom was in the room, so I just wanted to mute temporarily. Okay, let's just do some little lassoing to get this banner copied. copy paste this real quick because I'm going to need to duplicate it on the side view panels like this one. So let's just paste the frame and then Oh whoopsie. I am a dummy. I meant to do this. Copy frame. And then what I'm going to do is get Like once I get the backgrounds done for this part of the animatic, animatic, I might cut the screen just so I can do some other stuff. But let's see.
bow. I just realized that this was above the stream overlay the whole time I've been working on the Anna. Oh dear. I don't know why my mouse is appearing over there. That is very creepy. But okay. Anyway, oh, flash is saving. Oh wow, yeah, we've been doing this for quite a few hours, so... Wow. Okay, let me just... Put these frames here and... This side here. Okay, super big. Very big. Oh, and this is definitely the actual Chocobo race right here. Oh, shoot. Man, now I can't even remember. <laughs> I was so focused on working on this, I wasn't fully paying attention to the songs at the same time. Okay, so this is where... Okay, so the animation... So let's see, this will be the stopping point. Which means as far as new backgrounds to draw, it looks like I can get away with copy-pasting backgrounds on a few of these frames. So let me just go back to this one. Paste the frame here, make it bigger. Oh dear. Okay, I just learned something. I completely forgot about flipping Toriel moving, so let me just... Uh, let's just fix this up. Oh boy. Oh dear. Okay. Well, that presents a little conundrum, doesn't it? You know what? I'm just gonna rework this part a bit.
Yeah, this isn't quite as consistent, but meh. Means I can.
Converted Freight Torio is a mess. You'll see more of that when we get to her introduction, which is probably going to be around part 50, 51. Depends on how Cake handles certain things. Ooh, mysterious. Oh, what? Nope, nope, did not want to paste on that frame. I want you to paste on this frame. I think I might just end the stream here for today, if that's okay with you guys. I'll probably do another one tomorrow if there's time, but thank you all for joining me. I'll, okay, let's go through it one more time from the start. In here, I'll even turn the music on for it. Let me just do this and turn the song back on and flash. Let's set it back to stream. And here we go. Let us do the thing. Oh. It would probably help if it wasn't muted. And go. song would loop if this was in my Premiere or After Effects file. And that's all we got for now. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. I guess if you want to know when I'm streaming, uh, following is the way to go. Uh, anyway, have a terrific day, and catch you. This video is brought to you by the following patrons. Faristo, The Starcasm, Skolapendra, Untime07, Zenium Smart, Lupasam, Dr. Meccano, Sarah Potter, and Purple War Stormbreaker. If you want to get access to cool updates, including Inverted Fate concept art, early access to music, and periodic status updates for both Inverted Fate and My Kingdom Hearts stories, then you can head on over to patreon.com slash dorked. Or, if you prefer single one-time donations, I've got a Ko-fi page over at ko-fi.com slash inverted fate. Inverted Fate can be found at invertedfate.com, and includes the integrated soundtrack, as well as some sound effects and other cool features. Thanks so much for stopping by, and have a fantastic day.